Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I have something very special. Have you ever used your Magmod equipment and thought, it's really, really good, but I wish it worked on other systems? Maybe on something larger, for example. Well, you guys are in luck because Magmod has just released the Magmod XL. And here it is. We got this package in the mail a few weeks ago. Uh, Magmod wanted us to test it out. So as you're seeing in some of the images right now, we got a chance to take it on the field and experiment with it a little bit. We shot with it during situations where maybe it was a little bit more harsh because I wanted to show you guys a little bit more when we would be using this gear as opposed to the smaller AD200. So we've been using it on the AD400 Pro. The reason that I wasn't using the AD400 as much in the past was because I genuinely do like using the Magmod equipment. And if I can't put a sphere on it, if I can't put a grid on it, if I can, and it messes up our whole ecosystem, it was very hard for me to justify this unless it was absolutely necessary in the middle of the day. So I can honestly tell you guys, I was, as soon as this thing came in the mail, I was genuinely excited to play with it because it allowed me to use a piece of equipment that I don't normally take with me on many shoots and actually get some real usage out of it, get some real world examples, because honestly, it's something that I'm definitely using more now because we have the whole ecosystem that lives together now with the 8200 and the 8400. So the one that we got has the Bowens mount because uh, Magma did ask us a few months prior what kind of large modifiers we had. And so this is the Bowens mount that goes onto the 8400. As you can see this reflector, it's a little bit different than the normal one because this one collapses. So that way it's a lot smaller. And why would you, why would that make a difference? The 8400 is already a fairly large unit. So if I can minimize the size for storing, for carrying and all that, it definitely helps. It was a very well thought out design to be to make it collapsible. Now, if I'm transporting it, one thing that I like to do is usually I'll put one of the grids on it. So that way when I'm carrying it around, it's not exposing the bulb to the elements. So at least there's a little layer of protection in the way. These new Magmod XL products, they come with two separate grids. One of them is a 40 degree and one of them is a 20 degree. So you have this one if you want to narrow down the beam. And then you have this one if you really want to narrow down the beam and get really, really tight light on your subject. As you're seeing in the photo right now, we did a photo on the beach and honestly, I was very su pleasantly surprised with how cool it looked, how tight the beam was. Not only that, because it's on an AD400, it was able to give us enough power with that much narrow light. If we were doing it on the AD200, I, it could struggle a little bit to give us that much power out of it and still give us such a tight beam. So I was very glad that we had the 20 degree grid because it really did allow us to control light even more. Not only that, if you do use the, if you wanted to get even a tighter beam, you can actually stack them together. So one on top of the other is gonna give you an even tighter beam. I didn't experiment with that, but I'm gonna do so in the future. So stay tuned, I'll probably post some photos on our Instagram with it and I'll make sure to mention that we stack the grids to see how tight of a beam we can really get. Now going on the opposite of that, going from very, very tight beam of light to the MagSphere. So this is the MagSphere. I guess it would be the MagSphere XL, right? Because it goes on the XL. You can see, let me show you guys. I'm gonna tilt this forward just a little bit. So look at the size on that and look at the size on that. It's, I mean, I'm eyeballing it and I'm sure the number is somewhere where they sent us with the press, but I'm gonna say it's about two and a half times bigger. You, can, you guys can be, and you guys can judge for yourself. So when you talk about the size of light and how much that matters as far as softness goes, you can see some of the images that I'm posting right now and you can see how much softer the light is with this sphere. One thing that I'm really, really careful with is either using soft boxes or using umbrellas if I'm by myself. If I have an assistant, it's a lot easier to be able to tell them, hey, hold on to that stand really, really well because it's gonna act like a parachute. With this, I'm, I feel a lot more comfortable putting it on a nice stand and I know it's not going to fall over. I put it as high as I would say like six, seven feet high and I didn't have any issues or thinking, oh, it's going to fall over. It's a lot more comforting than putting it on an umbrella, for example. And not only that, but if you really, really want to double down and make sure that it's sturdy on the light stand, the case that it brings, let me pull it up. This case can also be attached to the light stand. So that way, if you have, you know, you want to put some of your equipment in here to so really weigh it down, you can attach it to the light stand at the bottom and give you even more stability. In my case, I use a pretty sturdy, pretty large light stand when I'm using this unit. So I didn't feel like it was necessary, but the option is there. 
On the case, you can also attach it with a strap so you can carry it around, so you can carry your modifiers in there. That makes it a lot easier. For us, to be quite honest, I was putting this with a grid inside my Peak Design bag, and I was just squeezing it into the empty slot that I don't carry a lens in, and it, it fit really, really well. Because remember, all this equipment is all rubberized, so it can really break down as small as you want and just shove it into you know a little slot. So that's what I did instead of carrying the big case, but, but if you wanna carry the case, absolutely, you can carry that around and store extra things in it as well. And another thing that I wanted to mention is, I actually didn't know this until I was looking at the presser, but, and I probably should have done that before I shot, but you know, you know how we are. We open things up and then we play with them and then we read the instructions, right? But what I wanted to mention is that when it is compressed like this, when the reflector is compressed, it's gonna give you a wider spread. So you put the sphere on and you compress it like this, it's gonna give you more spread and it's gonna go a little bit more all over the place. If you extend it and do that, it's gonna give you a slightly tighter beam. So it really, you can control it even more with this reflector it gives you a little bit more more options so beyond putting the sphere on you can also control it even more by contracting this or extending it and a few more facts about the reflector one of them is that obviously you can't dent it since it's rubber it's going to bend it's not going to break it's not going to chip the color's not going to wear off and i say this because if you look at this reflector it's been put through its paces so you see it's it's all scratched up um, I haven't dented it surprisingly, but that's probably because we haven't used it that much. I, like I said, I didn't really take it out as much until recently. Check this out. This is a good segue too. If you look at the little coated cover that I have on it, A, yes, it is to soften it a little bit, but also I was using in case we needed to put a, a gel, a CTO gel typically. And what we would do would just be one of those old sheets. I'm sure you guys remember them. They're loud and they're annoying. And yeah, that's, that's the only real option that I found. I would place it on top of the reflector and then I would place this on top of it to hold it basically so it wouldn't go anywhere. Magmod has come along and supplied us with these little guys. So these gels go right inside the dome and when you put it in, you're gonna wiggle it in a little bit and then it's gonna be, let me see, there we go. And once you rotate it and put it in place, it's secure in there. So check this out. Now you have a mag gel. You can stack a grid on top of that. You can do the bubble on top of that. And obviously, when would you want to use these gels? When you want to correct inside for tungsten lighting, or if you want to be creative and add a little bit of blue like you're seeing right now, that's another situation where we would put a CTO gel and then change our white balance. So just the ease of putting gels on, this just really changed the game. Instead of having to carry that piece of plastic and then having to MacGyver it to make sure that it stays in place. This is just such a cleaner look and not only that you can stack them So one thing that we do sometimes is we'll do let's see if this one's a quarter. Yep So we'll do a full CTO and then a quarter CTO on top of that So that way we can do a little bit more blue in the surrounding. I haven't done it with this one as much I've been doing it with the regular mag mod with 8200 but now that we have this I really I'm excited to play with this because now that it gives us a lot more power it we can play with this a little bit more since we're killing a little bit of light every time we're stacking modifiers on. It makes you feel like the tools that you have are a little bit more useful, if that makes sense. And a few more things about the reflector. Now the inside of the reflector is a different type of coating since obviously it's not gonna be metal since this is stiff, but allegedly, but allegedly it's a little bit less harsh. And you can kind of see, I'm pointing it towards my softbox over here so you guys can kind of take a look. You see the metal one on my left hand is a little bit harder and it just, the light just seems a little bit more specular versus the one, this one right here, where it just looks a little bit softer. So I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to experiment actually because I didn't really see that until a little bit later. Again, I went out like a buffoon and started shooting before reading instructions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a test. So stay tuned. I'll do a test with this reflector and I'll do a test with that reflector and we can see if there's any significant difference. So another thing that I wanted to mention is because I know that not everybody uses Bowen's mount, I know that some people use Profoto, is they made the back replaceable, which is twofold. One, in case you guys decide to switch systems, so you can see, boom, there it is. One thing is if you guys decide to change systems, you can always change the back and you can keep using the reflector. I like that. Also, if anything tears or anything breaks or anything like that, and you just need to replace a certain part. Honestly, from a, I'm not a hippie or anything like that, but from a environmental standpoint, I like that. I like that it's not wasteful. You know what I mean? Instead of having to replace an entire thing, you're replacing pieces 
and that way you're not creating as much waste which i commend magma for doing that that's actually i really do like that oh and something i did forget to mention is that as of right now we just got the cto so just the corrective gels but they are also coming out with the creative colors so those are also going to be able to be stacked inside of the reflector and all of these gels also work with all the mag boxes so you can just squeeze them into the mag box rotate and now you have ctos you have colors all that good stuff so really well thought out everything works within their ecosystem really well with these larger modifiers and all, all in all this is my thoughts on it when magmod came out back in i don't remember when it was but when we jumped on it was probably like 2016 i think something like 2015 2016 and it really did change the game as far as how easy things were to take on put on adjust all those things were we doing similar modifiers beforehand yes but the reason that magmod stood out to us was how easy everything is and with the larger modifiers now it really did just evolve from that theory because like i was saying in the beginning i didn't use my 8400 that much in the last few weeks not just because i wanted to give you guys content for this video but also because i genuinely was excited to use new equipment with the equipment that i already own it really has allowed us to be more a little bit more creative to be able to shoot in lighting situations that maybe sometimes we would avoid a little bit more and now with this it does give us the confidence to go out there and shoot in less than ideal situations at weddings for the first half of the day when it's super super bright we want to be using these and then later in the day or later in the evening we switch back over to the ad 200 where we don't need as much power so all in all I'm really excited that this came out. I'm gonna be using it a lot in the coming seasons. And if you guys follow us on Instagram or I'm gonna be submitting a lot to Magmod as well, you're gonna see what you can create with these modifiers. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great rest of the day.